In this video, we'll take you through the powerful ways that tasks can be used in Fusion. We'll cover how to find and schedule tasks into a shift, adding and editing tasks and short interval control, shadow tasks, the summary task view, task options and recurring and duplicated tasks. Tasks are central to Fusion. You can find them in the Standard Tasks list, which is a palette of standard tasks to choose from. The Planned Task list, tasks that need to be done but haven't been scheduled yet. And inside each shift, tasks that are scheduled to be completed on a shift. The easy way to schedule a task into a shift is to drag and drop it into that shift. Because a task normally takes time and resources to complete, adding a task increases people and equipment required for the shift. Tasks can also be dragged into a shift from the planned tasks area and from one shift to another. The resources area highlight red when you don't have enough resources available for the tasks scheduled to a shift. Moving tasks helps you balance the plan so that your team has enough people and equipment to complete the tasks scheduled for that shift. To add a task to a shift, simply right-click and choose Add Task. You can add standard tasks by clicking the plus button here or by simply right-clicking and selecting Add a Standard Task. You can add planned tasks in the same way. To edit a task, right-click over the task and select Edit. This brings up the detail of the task. When adding or editing a task, you can set a priority for the task, allocate a work order, assign the task to another process, set the task type, select a date when the task is due, describe the task to be done, select a location for the task, tag the task and leave notes. You can also set a start time in minutes from the start of the shift. Select the duration of the task in hours, describing how long it should take to complete the task. Set a target for the task that's measured in units. And finally, see the completion status of the task. Resources are a very important part of tasks. You can see the required resources are identified here. Resources include the number of people in different roles, and the pieces of equipment of different types that are needed to complete the task. You can add attachments, for example a procedure or a picture you've taken, by clicking this button in the top left. Select Add, then browse for the document you want to attach. Task attachments will print with a shift plan they're scheduled to and can be used in the actual screens. If the task has been set a target, you can select whether short interval control is required as well as the duration of the interval. Short interval control results will be entered in the actual screen. You can also mark a task as important, which will make the task visible on the summarized schedule screen. Finally, you can select whether inspection is required, and you can see later on whether the inspection was completed. You can assign a task to another process these are called shadow tasks, and they allow you to collaborate with other processes. For example, if maintenance is required on a piece of equipment, or if training needs to be scheduled for a team member. In this case, we're scheduling a task for the dozers team. The resources required from the assigned process will be shown alongside your own resources, and you can indicate how many people or how much equipment will be needed from each process to do the task. Having scheduled this shadow task, we can see a question mark on the task in our plan. This means that this task has not yet been approved by the other process planner. If we're from the dozers process, we can choose to approve or decline the task by clicking on the green or red icon. Now we can go back to our own trucks and shovel process and we can see that the question mark has changed to a green tick to show it's been approved. As we look closely at a task, the coloured bar indicates the task type. The priority of the task is indicated by a number and a letter. S equals a statutory or safety task, indicated with a red S icon. P 
equals production or priority tasks. These will directly affect the plan if not completed. A represents auxiliary tasks, tasks that should be done but won't directly affect the plan if not completed. C represents contingency tasks. These should be done if other work isn't possible and they don't get included in the resource balance. The priority and description of the task is shown here. By selecting the box, you can quickly make changes. You can also see icons, such as whether the task is recurring, whether the task is a shadow task and if it still needs approval, and whether the task has got attachments. By selecting the attachment icon, you're able to download and view the attachments. There are also icons to show the source of the task, such as SAP. This area shows the target and units for the task, and finally the percent completion of the task. Task completion as well as short interval control is normally input by supervisors using the actual screen. If you right click on a standard task, there are a number of options available. You can edit or delete the task, copy it to another process, duplicate the task, assign it to a new group, mark the task recur, mark the task type, mark a task as important so that it's always visible in the schedules, add and view an attachment, and finally you can add a new standard task. Recurring tasks can save you a lot of time in planning. To make a task recur, right-click over the standard task you want to recur, hover down to Recurrence, then across to Add. If there are existing recurrences for this task, they'll be visible here. Select the date you want the recurrence to begin, the shift for it to recur in, the frequency, how often it's to repeat, and when you want the recurrence to end. You can also choose to show this recurrence on the week 3, 4 and 5 view by selecting this option. Then click Save. These tasks will be automatically scheduled out into the future. There's also the option of duplicating a scheduled task by right-clicking on the task and selecting Duplicate, or by holding down the control button while dragging and dropping a scheduled task in the same or different shift. That was a short overview of the key functions of Fusion tasks. Now that you know how it works, it's time to start using Fusion to help your team make and keep commitments.